With the Sagrada Familia as our backdrop, we can only be in one place. And that's Barcelona, so let's get started. The last time we came to Barcelona, we didn't even visit the Sagrada Familia, did, did we? Did we not? No, but we'd been here several years ago. And um, I can't even remember, did we go inside at that time? We went in here once. So we'll not be going in today. We're just going to be staying outside to take advantage of the right. weather. Definitely. There are lovely little gardens surrounding the building. The Sagrada Familia was designed by the Catalan architect Antoni Gaudi. His work on the building is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Construction started on March 19, 1882 and is due to be completed in 2026. Most of Gaudi's works can be seen in Barcelona. The architect died in 1926, so did not see the completion of his most famous work, the Sagrada Familia. When construction first began on the Sagrada Familia, it was understood to be a simple Roman Catholic church. Later on, it was designated as a cathedral. And then in 2010, Pope Benedict declared it a basilica. Do you remember the first time that we visited Barcelona? Oh, this was quite some time. It was, um, it was in May, because I can remember we went to a bar to watch the Eurovision Song Contest and the UK came in in last place. Again. But that could be any year, <laughs> couldn't it? Um, but what I do remember was that the, the place we stayed at was run by these two guys, and I didn't actually realise when I booked it, but it was a clothing optional place. <laughs> Oh yes, now, that rings a bell. Fortunately when we were there, everyone was fully clothed, including us. Um, but it was basically just used as a base and we went around and saw all the sites. Our last trip before the pandemic was actually to Spain and to Barcelona. Um, but we didn't do all the regular sites that time because we were staying in a different location and we wanted to enjoy the beaches and also the shops, which we will be seeing very soon. You can book your ticket for La Sagrada Familia online. If you're coming to Barcelona for the day and you want to take a look around all the central tourist sites, you can buy a one-day, one-zone ticket for the Metro. It only costs €10.50. Euros 50. It's time to take the Metro to our next 
destination. This is La Ramblas. I saw a pre-mark up there. Oh. <laughs> We've got one of those in Uxbridge. But um, there's a mango over there as well. No thanks, I am not hungry yet. <laughs> if you did want to do a little bit of shopping, there's all these little stalls that sell knickknacks, paddy wax. Football memorabilia. Hold on to your wallet, hold on to everything tightly on La Ramblas. It has a bit of a reputation as a hot spot for pickpockets. Um, I can remember one time when we were here before, we were approached by someone who maybe genuinely was asking for the time, but it looked as though that they had an accomplice who was like, ready to steal our bags. So we are going to tread with a little bit of caution around here today. Look, don't you think that the paving has a really weird kind of effect? I think it's flat, but it looks as though it's like it's moving or curved or something. Hmm. It's a little bit disconcerting. Look at those cuddly toys. There's a Carry 4 supermarket if you need to pop in for any bits and pieces. Anyone for ice cream? Not yet. <laughs> Look at this. There's an open market. This is the St. Joseph Boutique Market. Maybe a strawberry coconut. <clears throat> Should I get one too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're two euro each. Yeah. I think I was strawberry. On its own. Can I get the... Uh, can I get the strawberry cup? No. I think I just want strawberry. Uh, strawberry and coconut? Yeah. Mango? Strawberry and coconut. Oh, can hey. I also have this one? Hey. Hey. Yeah. Mm, this is nice. This is nice too. Look, taste it. I don't know. Mmm. Try this one. Oh, I taste some nice coconut. It's almost like um like a melted down ice cream. It tastes really 
refreshing. Mm. Doesn't this remind you of uh, Barrow Market somewhat? Yeah, it does. It smells are different. They're much more of the, um, the Parma ham. I know that's sort of not the only meat. Look, they have like lots of different tapas. What's that? What's wrong? Oh, here, look at the eye. What's that? Oh my god. I don't know. Oh my god, that is frightening. What is it? I don't know. I see tripe over there. Wait, wait. Is it a tongue? Is it a trotter? That is like tripe over there. Is that a brain? Yeah, I think so. But I don't know what animal this is. I don't want to look at any You can spend a whole day running here. Just wandering around. Because there's something different. For everyone. Well, yeah, around every corner. Oh, look, a pig's head. Wow, look at the size of the strawberries. We have come to the Gothic quarter now and we're heading towards Barcelona Cathedral and there's all these little tiny streets uh, buzzing with the atmosphere of little cafes and shops and bars and it's coming up to lunchtime while we're here and that only means one thing beer <laughs> Marcus, they have your calamari. So that was a nice lunch we had at Tapas San Miguel. We had the squid. Yes, and now it's time to do some more sightseeing. But I thought it was interesting that even though it's called Tapas San Miguel, the beer that they served was Estrella Dam. Well, it is Barcelona, isn't it? Barcelona City Hall, and it's very popular with school kids. Oh wow, look at these weird clocks. Look, there's Woody Allen. Is that like the Rolling Stones or something? Yeah. Rock. I huh? think I see Bono. And I also see Groucho Marx. Look, there's Elvis. David Bowie. Tina, Tina Turner, Turner. Michael Jackson. Amy Winehouse. Freddie Mercury. We certainly haven't done this before, Marcus. No, it's great to see all of this different side to Barcelona. This is the Gothic Quarter, is it? Yeah, and we've been... <laughs> For the past couple of hours now, making our way towards the cathedral, and we had to stop off for lunch, of course, along the way. And then you see all these little things like the shops and stuff. We have to stop by, don't we? Well, that's what it's all about. It's just about finding new things, not planning anything. Ooh, look at this. Okay, well, we really wish you could hear the music that was playing in this square while we were there. 
but unfortunately we got a copyright claim so we've had to replace it but I didn't want to lose this clip entirely because look at Paul he's dancing to the music there he comes so just have a look at this Where shall we go now? says Paul. And I reply, well, I think it's time that we did some shopping. Okay, let's go. Thanks for watching the show. Please continue to comment, like, and especially subscribe. Thanks. We've come to one of Barcelona's shopping areas at Glories and there's this fabulous building here which looks a bit like London's Gherkin. I think it's probably apartments or it could be offices I suppose. Um, there's a lot of construction going on here and we came here in, in 2020, 2020, uh -huh. the last time we were here as well. February? Yeah. So there's been a lot of work taking place in that time. Here we are at Glories and you can see it's actually a Westfield centre. But it houses my favourite European store, C and A. Many of you will remember shopping at C and A in the UK before they pulled out about 20 years ago. And every time we visit mainland Europe, we always call in uh, to the store because the fashion just suits me right down to the ground. They've always got clothes that fit. And that is something which I find quite rare, apart from done stores, of course. Um, so we're gonna check it out and see what they've got in store today. I need my purchase. Well done. And pulling there too. Well, we've made it to El Corte Inglés, which is, of course, Spain's major department store. And it has the best coffee in the world. 
I normally order at least two caffeine con leches here, don't two I? Two to three. Well, we'll just have to see how much caffeine I can handle. But it's just the way that it's made, because it's like um, what a shot or a couple of shots of coffee, and then they pour in the hot milk. The hot milk, and it's just the the whole combination of it. It's, I think it is the experience. I think it is, yes, and just uh, there's something about being in Spain and having that sort of coffee here. So we're going to go in and uh, grab a few cups now. Where to start? Well, I was always going to get more than one and I didn't want to have to line up again. So we, we got four coffees. Isn't that going to keep us up tonight? Well, it may do. Let's see, is it the classic taste? Delicious. This tastes so much better than a latte. I really can't put my finger on it. There's like this creaminess and this moorishness to it. Yes, Mark, it's delicious. Placa de Catalunya. This is indeed our final destination in Barcelona. Have you had a nice day? Yes, I've had a really good time. I haven't been here for two years, so it's been a really good um, experience to relive things that we experienced in the past and some new ones. It was always good to get back to CNA. Um, I, I do a lot of shopping there and we've been to Europe so many times in the run up to February 2020. So it's been two years. I was nearly out of clothes. <gasps> And, of course, you can't beat the El Corte Anglaise coffee. No, of course you can't. Another two, waiter. Okay, well, that is it from Barcelona. We will see you somewhere next time. Bye. Bye. Gosh, it's like Trafalgar Square. Look at all the pigeons. I've never seen so many pigeons in Spain before. I think we've got a rival TV team over there as well. <laughs>